is there a truly reality out there that humans can really know? It's an age-old battle between realists and absolutists. God is not great, how religion ruins everything. And yet it's utterly and totally ridiculous. We need to live for something beyond ourselves. There's a story about a mathematician who goes to a restaurant and gets his bill and he adds it up and he says something to the effect of, quote, well, the arithmetic looks okay, but I fear that the axioms upon which it is built might not be as solid as one would hope, close quote. Axioms might not be as solid? Isn't that the whole point of axioms, to be solid? After all, math starts out with axioms, these fundamental teachings upon which everything else builds. I mean, don't you remember, you know, high school geometry when you did that? Let me give you an American Heritage Dictionary definition of an axiom. Listen to this. Self-evident principle or one that is accepted as true without proof as the basis for argument. Did you catch that? Accept it as true without proof? In other words, you have to build your entire system of math on axioms, on things which you have to accept without proof? Mm, sounds a little bit like faith. They always thought math was solid, solid, solid. Let me read you. Let me read you a quote from one of the 20th century's greatest mathematicians and what he says about math. This is Bertrand Russell. He said, mathematics can be defined as, quote, as a subject in which we never know what we are talking about, nor whether what we are saying is true. This is close quote. This is mathematics. You know, it gets even worse if you think about it. I think we all remember Euclidean geometry, what we were taught in high school. The angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees, and parallel lines never meet, and the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. I mean, this is geometry. It's about as fundamental, as basic as you could get, because it's based on these axioms. And you know, for a couple thousand years, this was the foundation the whole world, the Western world, accepted this doctrine about the axioms of, of, of Euclid, general truths that we were taught about the physical world, truths that were so clear and evident nobody in his right mind would doubt them. Well, a funny thing happened in the 19th century. It was called non-Euclidean geometry, in which mathematicians developed a logically consistent geometry, and guess what? Parallel lines did meet, and the angles of a triangle were either sometimes more than 180 degrees or less than 180 degrees. And the thing was, it was as logical and it was coherent as Euclidean geometry. In fact, when Albert Einstein came along with his general relativity, he showed that this geometry, not Euclidean geometry, fit the world better than Euclidean geometry. In other words, this whole point, the foundation for, of, of geometry for all these centuries was completely kicked out from underneath us. And it gets even worse. You know, there's a story about this mathematician whose big desire was to put mathematics on a logical foundation. Because if you think if anything's gonna be on a logical foundation, it would be mathematics. Well, he spent years and years doing his work and he thinks he puts it on a logical foundation and he sends it to this mathematician I just mentioned, Bertrand Russell. And Bertrand Russell comes along and basically kicked out the entire foundation. This man's whole attempt to put math on a logical foundation failed. And it all comes down to what's sometimes called the self-referential problem. Maybe you've heard this kind of joke, this mind game. It says, the barber of Seville shaves everyone who doesn't shave himself, okay? The barber, or I could pronounce it right, the barber of Sevilla shaves everyone who doesn't shave himself. 
So the question is, does the barber of Sevilla shave himself? Well, if he doesn't shave himself, then he must shave himself because he shaves everyone who doesn't shave himself. But if he shaves himself, then he can't shave himself. Now we have here, might sound like some kind of Siri, silliest mind game with words and so on, but it's a foundational paradox that seems to strike at the heart of all knowledge. And it gets even worse. In the 20th century, a mathematician named Kurt Gerdell show that there are inherent limits in what you can prove mathematically. In other words, basically to get it in a nutshell, he says you can't utterly and ultimately prove mathematics. You can't be sure that any statement you make is absolutely certain. You can't prove it within the system. You can go outside of that system and get proofs to help prove what you did, but then you're in another system. How do you prove what's in that system? You got to go outside of that and on and on and on, and it goes on forever. And what this means is that even in the area of mathematics, simple mathematics, our knowledge remains incomplete and you can never, ever be certain of the axioms of arithmetic. You'll never could be certain that they won't contradict each other. In other words, even as something supposedly as rigid and solid and logical as math, some aspects just can't be proven. And I think that's incredibly revelatory that even cold, hard math, supposedly the foundation of all certainty, comes with certain inextricable contingencies. I like what one mathematician said about the work of Kurt Gerdell. He said, quote, the one distinguishing feature of mathematics that it might have claimed in this, in this century, the absolute certainty of its results could no longer be claimed. Again, we're talking math now. Even math is, doesn't have this absolute certainty. It was funny because after Bertrand Russell destroyed the work of Frege, he spent years of his life trying to do the same thing, put math on an absolute firm foundation. And listen to Bertrand Russell. I wanted certainty in the kind of way in which people want religious faith. I thought that certainty is more likely to be found in mathematics than anywhere else. And then he goes on and he just talks about all the work he did and this and that. And he concludes by saying, I came to the conclusion that there was nothing more I could do in the way of making mathematical knowledge indutable. I mean, listen to this. This is unbelievable. We're talking mathematics here. And what they're saying, in, in, by the 20th century, every, up till then they thought math was absolute, math was certain, these were absolute certain truths, which is one reason why many philosophers in the 20th century were mathematicians. Because a lot of philosophers, they're looking for certainty. They're looking for absoluteness. And they thought they'd find it in math and in the end, it comes down that even math, even these things that you tend to think are absolute, foundation was kicked out and they all come with a certain degree of faith. I'm not talking religion. In other words, you basically have to take math on faith as well, which is kind of interesting. And I like this quote from a fellow named John Polkinghorne. He's a mathematical physicist and he's an ordained priest at the Church of England. And in this whole context of math, listen to what Paul Kinghorn says. He says, quote, if we cannot even prove the consistency of arithmetic, it seems a bit much to hope that God's existence is easier to deal with, close quote. And I guess the point is, if even if something like math, there are going to be elements we're not going to understand, elements we're going to have to take on faith, how much more so if you're going to be dealing with something like the existence of God and religious faith? So math takes faith, and admittedly, belief in religion, belief in God, belief in some of those truths takes faith as well. But if math takes faith, why is it such a big deal that we have to believe certain things about our religion on faith as well?